of God has a lot to do with how we live our Christian lives. Sometimes I'm afraid that our most present inclination is to await for the moment when God is our judge, assessing our eternal destiny, deciding for us between heaven and hell. Now, you may not admit this, but I know it's true. <laughs> Seeing us as sheep and goats. In my experience as a pastor, I've encountered many Christians who seem to face the end of their lives quite anxious about the judgment awaiting them. I've been asked by some whether the person was good enough or if they sinned too much. Such anxiety completely shapes and colors their confidence in God as well as their freedom to become children of God. Now, you may not be like that. I grant you that. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus, knowing that he is about to leave his disciples, wants his disciples to be very clear about their status before God so that they will rightly proclaim the good news that God intends all to hear. He affirms first that they are no longer servants. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. What a reassuring and happy thing it must have been to be chosen by Jesus and to know that you have a place in his plan and purpose. And that is true for his disciples and us as followers as well. Now, perhaps it's only a phenomenon from a, a boy's childhood experience, but I can well remember being part of a group of kids about to play baseball or soccer or some other team sport, waiting while the two captains had their pick of teammates. You ever had that experience? Each kid was hoping desperately not to be the last picked. I know that was true for me. I was pretty short at the time. The feeling of being chosen early was always joyful to know that one mattered to the captain and was desired as a teammate was just great. Chosen to be friends of Jesus felt just the same for the disciples, I'm sure. They had graduated from followers to fellow proclaimers of gospel. I wonder how many of us understand our faith as something we have chosen rather than the wonder of being selected by God to be Jesus' friend, to be blessed by the one who made us for a relationship with God. Do we, do, do you, feel blessed because God values you so much that you've been chosen as an announcer of the unfolding reality of the kingdom? I had a remarkable experience as in an Ethiopian, Ethiopian Orthodox church in Nairobi, Kenya, when a friend took me to visit. At the conclusion of the liturgy, the parish priest went to every member of the congregation, including my friend and I as visitors, and blessed every single person. It was unspeakably special an act which told me and all there that we were each special to God. Oh yes, it took quite a while. And it would have delayed our coffee hour. But my, in that community, it was far too important to do for anything to stand in its way. There, there is a coffee hour, by the way. It's just waiting at the back. Not coffee, but lemonade, I think. Just to give you some encouragement. I certainly felt blessed by God to be part of that service. You see, Jesus knew what lay ahead for his disciples, or rather his friends, 
and that their blessing would be an important enabler for all that they would face and encounter. Henry Nouwen reminds us that every time we listen with great attentiveness to the voice that calls us the beloved, we will discover within ourselves a desire to hear that voice longer and more deeply. Chosen, blessed, and fruitful, because after all, there was much work for them to do on God's behalf in the world. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Over 2,000 years later, in a strange hot place called Etobicoke, you and I are examples of that fruitfulness, as are countless gatherings of Christians around the world. And, and what is the lubricant that facilitates such fruitfulness? It's our love for one another, rising out of the love that Jesus displayed in laying down his life for us. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This truly awesome work of Christ has created a whole new self for each of us and incorporated us into a whole new community. That is what Paul's describing to the Colossians and also to us. Ours is to be a whole new life with all its fresh possibilities, a new set of attitudes and behaviors, a positive way of living that will give us true joy and the abundant life that Jesus promised to those who believe. When we take seriously that we are chosen and blessed by God, then we begin to value ourselves and no longer need to employ all the strategies we use to make ourselves seem unique and special and yes, perhaps better than others. We are not to be about holding ourselves back from people, holding grudges, but about giving and forgiving. Out of our ongoing relationship with a God who is generous and active in love, we can allow ourselves to be drawn into that same mode of being. Because connecting to God is connecting to freedom, a freedom that opens to us the possibility of love and enables us to be free from wanting others to serve us. For that Christ's love, even toward my neighbor next door, thanks be to God. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, on this hot day, we are thankful for the privilege of coming before you, listening to your word and gathering around your table. May each of those things strengthen us and enable us to be your people in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, if anyone has comments and dares to keep me longer, <laughs> I'll certainly be open to hearing them. We'll defer until next week. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments? Anything you'd like to say? Something you didn't understand, perhaps? Okay, lemonade is at the back. <laughs>